chapter 4, you know, uh, said that Jesus was a Jew, you know, how, how, be it, uh, how is it that thou being a Jew asketh drink of me, which of, uh, am a woman of Samaria, right? Uh, yeah, and right. so uh, she acknowledged the fact that Jesus was a Jew. Exactly. Right. exactly. When they uh, nailed Jesus to the cross, they hung an accusation above his head and it said, this is Jesus of Nazareth, king of the Jews. Now, the Jews didn't like that, of course. They went to Pilate, and they said, Say not that he is the king of the Jews, but that he said he was the king of the Jews. Mm -hmm. Pilate said, What I've written, it's written. I've written. That's right. And so, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, That's right. for it is the power Amen. of God unto salvation Amen. to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first, and also... To the Greek. To the Greek yeah. When you read uh, uh, the book Thank of you. Acts, 
The Bible tells us, of course, in Galatians that Paul was the minister to the uncircumcision. He was our apostle. Us Gentiles. Those of us that were aliens and outside the commonwealth of Israel. God raised up a man named Paul to be our apostle. But do you know that man Paul, every time he went to a new city, the book of Acts, where's the first place he went? Synagogue. The synagogue. Yep. Because he was burdened for his kinsmen according to the flesh. And he understood the fact that the gospel is to the Jew first because salvation is of the Jew. Amen. 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 You better love that Jew. Salvation <laughs> is of the Jew. That's right. Salvation is of the Jew. Uh, listen here. I understand they're enemies for the gospel's sake oh. right now. Yeah. Right. But Paul said they're beloved for the Father's sake. Amen. Who's Amen. the fathers? Amen. Abraham, yeah. Isaac, Isaac, and, and Jacob. Jacob. Amen. God made a covenant with Abraham. I'll bless them that bless thee, and I'll curse them that curse thee. That covenant of Abraham got passed down to Isaac. Uh -huh. And then from Isaac, <coughs> it got passed down to Jacob. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then God changed Jacob's name. Jacob, that old supplanter, that thief, that conniver, right. that deceiver. Uh, God changed the supplanter and made his name Israel, oh. which means Prince of God. Amen. I tell you what. Uh, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Mm -hmm. Now, I understand in the Old Testament, they weren't in Christ like you and I are now in, in the New Testament as far as the body of Christ. But there's no doubt that when a man encounters God, he doesn't stay the same as what he was before the encounter. Amen. Amen. No truth. Amen. This Bible doesn't know anything about a fellow that meets God and then stays the same. You show me anyone that ever encountered Jesus in the New Testament and stayed the same. Man, if you was blind, you could see. That's right. If you was deaf, you could hear. If you was dead, you got raised up. Amen. Everybody that ever encountered Jesus in the New Testament was different after the encounter. Mm -hmm. right. If you've ever met Jesus, then you're different too. Amen. Amen. And if you ain't different, it's because you ain't never met him. That's right. Amen. That's right. That's right. That's right. Oh, I know. That. I'm meddling now. That's right. There's lots of religious people that say they know him, but they ain't never met him. Yeah, right. so true. And the proof they ain't never met him is they ain't no different. That's yeah. right. So true. Nobody said he was going to be perfect. That's right. I'm not perfect. I talked to Sister Gibson before the service. She told me her husband's not perfect either, by the way. <laughs> she told me some other stuff. I'm going to leave that alone. <laughs> no, no, <I'm> just <laughs> now I'm really meddling, amen? Yeah. <laughs> You better love that Jew. You better love that Jew. You better leave this replacement theology crap alone. That's right. You better, you better ditch that junk. Yes, boycott the best section. You, you better get off of YouTube. Yeah, his name. That's right. Stephen L. Anderson. That's right. Yeah, that's right. I like what Brother Gip calls him, Slanderson. <laughs> <laughs> Brother Gip calls him Slanderson because his last name is Anderson. His initials are SL, so Slanderson. Because that's all he does is slander folks. Yeah. That's all he does. Yeah. Slanders, you know, Schofield, slanders, you know, uh, Ruckman, you know, slanders... You know, uh, you know, uh, uh, God called uh, men that God has used to bless uh, literally, uh, you know, millions of people, you know, down through yeah. the years and so forth. Uh, uh, you'd be hard pressed to find uh, more fruit than what the Schofield Reference Bibles produced. Yeah, he was a double married preacher, though, uh, Brother Gibson. Uh, yeah, look out! <laughs> I wonder if some of these guys out of Jack Hiles and all that that are against the double married preachers. Uh, uh, that all use the Schofield Bible. Yeah, they, come on. they don't tell you what chapter to turn to. They'll, they'll, they try to imitate Hiles. In your Schofield Bibles, turn to page number 703. Yeah. <laughs> Instead of saying Isaiah chapter 10, they'll say turn in your Schofield Bibles to I, uh, Isaiah or page uh, 703 or whatever. He was a double married preacher though. Yeah. Yeah. Man, what, what's, what are they doing using a reference Bible from a double married preacher? How can God bless a double married preacher? Amen. Amen. My goodness. Well, I'm all over the place tonight, man. I'm, I'm hitting the Jews and, you know, hitting Stephen Anderson and hitting the replacement theology. And, oh, we'll get the message here in a minute. I'm just having a little bit of fun with you right now. That's right. Keep preaching. You better love those Jews. Listen here. God's not done with Israel. He's going to restore them. 
Sure, he's yeah. got a purpose. He's yeah, got a plan. Right. And when you get these people uh, like Anderson on YouTube and, and all that, you know, telling you that God is done with the Jews oh, yeah. and that we, the church, are the new Israel, oh, that, that's, that's a bunch of heresy. Yeah. That's a bunch of heresy. Uh, you better uh, watch out for these self-called YouTube preachers. That's right. Uh, listen here. The church that Stephen Anderson came out of uh, I disavows him. His own pastor of the church he came out of wants nothing to do with him. And so you better be careful of, of people like that that have uh, built up a following because of social media. Uh, I'm thankful for social media. Uh, like, you know, we're broadcasting on Facebook Live tonight. You know, praise God for that opportunity. Amen. Uh, we've got folks like uh, uh, Sister Kat and Sister Marie that tune in from New York uh, <laughs> yeah. almost every service. Yeah. That's right. There's that one lady in Hong Kong. I forget her name. What's her name, Byron? Melanie. Yeah, Melanie yeah. tunes in from uh, uh, Hong Kong and you know, uh, uh, I've got a, a master chief I work with. He, he, he tunes in. Uh, there's uh, folks from my Sunday school class that uh, uh, over at First Baptist Norfolk that tune in. And so uh, thank God for uh, uh, the technology yeah. that allows us to do those things. Yeah. But boy, you better, you better watch out for some of these nuts that are out there. And you better make sure that you get your nose in this Bible yeah. and that you study this Bible and you read this Bible and you know what this Bible says so that when someone's lying to you and not telling you the truth, You'll you can know. tell the difference. You know what? A, a, a bank teller has a keen eye for counterfeit bills. Mm -hmm. You go down to the bank and you try to pass some counterfeit bills, uh, you probably going to find yourself in handcuffs pretty fast. Wow. You know why? Those are trained eyes. Yeah, right. They know how to spot that stuff. You know how they spot that stuff so easily? By constant repetitious handling of real money. That's right. They handle the genuine article so much that when something comes across their counter that looks odd, it's almost like it's in flashing neon lights, and they spot that thing, and they're able to discern that's not real. That's fake. You know what? You better get so familiar with the genuine Amen that when some YouTube preacher right. or some preacher in the fr in, in the flesh yeah. Yeah. That's right. tells you something that it's not right, You'll know. you've spent so much time in the genuine article yes. that like a neon light, the Holy Spirit Amen. bears witness to your spirit and says, you know what, that fella just lied to you. I'm going to give you a message tonight. All right. The message I'm going to give you is going to come from John chapter 8, if you want to turn there. And it's going to come from a 1611 King James Amen. Bible. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hey. And the Bible I'm going to preach from tonight is perfect. It's infallible. It's inerrant. And it's inspired. Amen. The book I'm going to preach from tonight contains the words of the living God that are settled forever yes. in heaven. Amen. Heaven, heaven and earth are going to pass away but these words are never going to pass away and aren't you glad that God in his providence was so willing to give you his infallible word in your native tongue that you can read and study and meditate and memorize and preach to others you ought not to take that for granted and yet some of you, the last time you picked up your Bible was probably last Wednesday if you were here. <laughs> or maybe it was last Sunday. Or maybe the Sunday before. You know, uh, I, I made a New Year's resolution when the year started. How many of y'all have ever made New Year's resolutions? Yeah. Usually within the first couple of days they're done, right? <laughs> the busiest day of the year at the gym is January 1st. <laughs> Busiest day of the year, my friend. <laughs> Don't worry. By January 2nd and 3rd, it's already emptied out again. <laughs> but we all make resolutions. You know, um, in, in, in the past, I've been inconsistent sometimes with my Bible reading. I'd read today, but then I'd get busy tomorrow and not read. And then I might read the next day, but then I might re uh, miss it the next two days. 
Very, very inconsistent. And so I read my Bible, I studied my Bible, read through my Bible, but I wasn't consistent on that daily basis. And God convicted me about that. And so I said as my New Year's resolution that I was going to read the Bible every single day and not miss this year. And we halfway through the year now. It's, uh, what is it, June what, 9th? Yeah. June 9th. And I just want to thank the Lord God of heaven Amen. that so far in 2019, I ain't missed a day reading my Bible. All right. Don't, don't y'all clap. Don't y'all clap. Uh, listen here. Uh, that's what I'm supposed to do. Right. Don't y'all give me no applause. That's what I'm supposed to do, and that's what you're supposed to do. Amen. And I'm only sharing this with you because maybe someone out there needs to hear it. Maybe someone out there needs to hear it. You've been a little inconsistent with your Bible reading too. Here, here's what I did. Let me, let me give you some advice and I'm going to give with the message. The problem I was having was this. I was had unreasonable goals of what I was going to read. I was like, uh, uh, you know, reading, wanting to read 10 chapters a day or 20 chapters a day or 10 pages a day or 20 pages a day. And then I'd get busy with work, the responsibilities of family and all that stuff. And then it gets to be late in the evening. And uh, at the time I would read my Bible, it's so late and I'm so tired. Uh, I'll do it tomorrow and I'll catch up. Well, if I didn't read 10 chapters today, that means tomorrow i got to read 20 chapters. Yeah. So how likely is it for me to read 20 chapters today if I didn't read 10 chapters yesterday, right? Yeah. And so you get behind. And what happens when you get behind? You get discouraged. Yeah. Oh, whatever. I'll start over again some other time, right? So here's what I did. A couple things. One, I decided on a reasonable amount to read four chapters. Wow. So starting on January 1st, every single day, I've read four chapters. And so this morning I finished Ecclesiastes and moved into Song of Solomon. So I'm over halfway through. And so I'm going to finish probably for our first week of October. And then reading them same four chapters a day. That gives me a chance to go through the New Testament a second time before January 1st rolls around again. So by the grace of God, at the end of this year, hopefully, I'll have been through the whole Bible once and then the New Testament twice. Now, Brother Gibson, he's probably already read it five times this year. <laughs> and that's good. Brother Ruckman, man, he used to read that thing probably like once a month, I think it was. Yeah. And so uh, uh, if you've got the time and the yes, discipline and the yes. determination to do that, then praise yes, the Lord, geez. you do you. Yep. But listen here, I don't care if you read one chapter a day and it takes you three years to get through your Bible. You read your one chapter a day. Yeah. You just make sure you read something every day. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. Amen. If you wouldn't miss a meal to satisfy that corrupt flesh, mm -hmm. then why would you deprive your right. soul and your spirit of the nourishment it needs as well? Right. Uh, Job said, though, uh, I've esteemed the words of thy mouth uh, more than my necessary food. And so that's what we need to do as well. We need to esteem the words of his mouth more than our necessary food. Read that Bible. And that's one of the things I do, I do respect about uh, Brother Gibson uh, so much is the fact that I know he reads his Bible. I know he reads it. I've been with him when he reads it. Man, uh, he'll be laying there in the bed, snoring away with his C CPAP machine on, and he's got the Bible playing on, on his uh, on his phone. I've done been in a hotel with him. I know how he does things. Amen. That's right. And so uh, I appreciate and I respect that, and that helps inspire me to want to follow that example. I hope you'll follow that example too. Get in that book every single day. All right, John chapter eight. John chapter eight. And you say, boy, you're taking a lot of time. Well, that's because this message is going to be short. Amen. This is a short one. And so we, we got a little bit of time to play with. It's still light outside. You know, I, I figured I'd just preach till it's dark, and it's not dark yet. Amen? <laughs> Amen. All right. John chapter 8. Now, the last time I spoke, we were in uh, John chapter 8 as well, and uh, we stopped at verse 48. And uh, last time I preached on the subject of whose child are you? Yeah. Whose child are you? And we talked about how there's children of disobedience, uh, how there's children of wrath. Uh, how there's children of the flesh, and ultimately how all three of those are children of the devil. Yeah. And then we talked about how the fact that there's children of God, and not everyone is the child of God. Uh, you're the child of God by faith in Christ Jesus, according to Galatians 3.26. Yeah. And if your faith is not in Christ Jesus, you're not the child of God. That's right. That's right. I don't care if you're Buddhist or Muslim or Jewish 
Uh, you can be Baptist, you can be Episcopal, uh, you can be Mormon, you can be Jehovah Witness, uh, you can be whatever you want to be. If you have not received Christ Jesus as your Lord and Savior, then you are not the child of God. But the Bible says that as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. And so, if you've ever been born again, if you've ever been washed in the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, if you've been sealed to the day of redemption by the Spirit of God, and the Spirit of God dwells in you, Christ in you, the hope of glory, then you, my friend, are the child of God. Amen. Anything less than that makes you a child of disobedience, a child of wrath, a child of the flesh, and ultimately, a child of the devil. And let me tell you something right now. None of the devil's children are going to make it to heaven. That's right. That's right. Uh, none of the devil's crowd is going to make it. The only way you'll ever make it is by trusting in Jesus Christ. And so that's what we spoke about last time. So we left off at verse 48. And in verse 48 it says, Then answered the Jews and said unto him, Say we not well that thou art a Samaritan and hast a devil? Now notice uh, uh, what they say here. Uh, say we not well that thou art a Samaritan. Now what was a Samaritan? Well, a Samaritan was basically a half-breed Jew. Yep. Uh, that was someone who had Jewish ancestry, but they also had Babylonian ancestry. And they were not pure Jews as far as the stock of Abraham. And so uh, the Jews of that day that were pure-blood Jews, uh, they were very racist. Uh, they were very bigoted. Uh, they were very prejudiced against the Samaritans. And so uh, telling Jesus here, uh, thou art a Samaritan, uh, they might as well drop the N-word. Because basically that's what saying a, someone uh, as a Samaritan, that's what it would have been the equivalent of in that day. And so uh, say, us, uh, say we not well that thou art a Samaritan, and not only that, but and has a devil. Listen here, son. Uh, you're a demon-possessed Samaritan. Wow. Now, someday, the Bible says every knee shall bow Amen. and every tongue shall confess Amen. that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen? Amen. Amen. Uh, the devil himself is going to get down on both knees and raise up his hands to a holy God and confess right. that Jesus Christ is Lord. And so, if the devil himself is going to have to do that, what do you think about these Jews? Because they're all dead now. They've all been dead for more than 2,000 years. And if they died lost, if they never got saved, they're in hell. Yeah. And someday, God's going to bring them up out of hell because death and hell are going to be delivered before that great white throne in Revelation right. chapter 20. And they're going to stand before that Holy One that they said was a demon-possessed Samaritan. Man. I'm going to face God with a lot of things that I'm ashamed of at the judgment seat of Christ. Uh, I, I'm going to face God uh, with a lot of things that uh, will embarrass me. And I hope when this thing's over with uh, that I've got something to show for my service. I hope I've just got a little bit of gold, silver, and precious stones, Amen. Jimmy. I hope it's not all wood, hay, and stubble, because I know a lot of it is going to be wood, hay, and stubble. Right. I just hope I got a little bit of gold, silver, and precious Amen. stones. Amen. Yeah. But you know what? Whether I do or whether I don't, I'm glad I don't have to face God having told him to his face that he was a demon-possessed Samaritan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. I've got my troubles. You've got yours. God. I've got my things to give account of. You've got yours to give account of. I'm glad I won't give account of that. Amen. Right. Amen. It says, verse 49, Jesus answered, I have not a devil, but I honor my father, and ye do dishonor me. Boy, you better be careful uh, dishonoring the son. Uh, yeah. Let me tell you something. Uh, here's a word of advice for you. If you want to get on a man's good side, brag on his boy. 
Brag on his boy. There you go. You want to make a friend of a man, you brag about his son and say some good things about his son, and you'll win a friend. But boy, you start attacking a man's son and dishonoring a man's yeah. son. You're not likely to make a friend. You're likely to make an enemy. Oh, yeah. And boy, I tell you what, nobody loves their son more than God loves his son. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Everybody talks about agape, sloppy agape. You see, God loves Jesus with agape love. Well, he also loves Jesus with phileo love. Did y'all know that? Yeah. I mean, all, all, all them scholars, you know, agape is that deep, personal, sacrificial love. Whereas phileo is that more casual, friendship, brotherly love. And so when Peter was standing with Jesus, Jesus was saying, Peter, agape thou me. Yea, Lord, thou knowest I phileo you. No, no, Peter, Peter. Agape thou me. Yea, Lord, I phileo you. Finally, Jesus says, Peter, phileo me. And Peter answers, yes, Lord, I phileo you. So twice Jesus tried to get Peter to agape love him. But Peter wouldn't do it. He would only phileo love Jesus. <laughs> what a crock yeah. of garbage. Yeah. <laughs> Let me tell you something. The next time you hear some preacher on the radio talk about agape love, let me tell you something. The New Testament uses the terms agape and phileo interchangeably. There are at least two passages in the New Testament where the two different Greek words are used in the same verse. And there are times when God refers to the Son with phileo love, not agape love. And I promise you, God does not have a casual friendship, brotherly love toward His Son. <laughs> That's why we don't need Greek and we don't need Hebrew. All we need is the infallible English. Amen? Amen. That's right. You're welcome. <laughs> See, it's preaching like that that probably keeps me out of seminary. Amen. All right, verse 50. Jesus said back there in verse 49 that she do dishonor me. Verse 50. And I seek not mine own glory... There is one that seeketh and judgeth. Verily, verily, I say unto you, if a man keep my saying, he shall never see death. Now, of course, you understand that in the grand scheme of things, he shall never see death. What kind of death is he talking about? The second death. The second death. Uh, listen here. Uh, uh, we all know folks uh, that have known the Lord and loved the Lord, and they have walked the valley of the shadow of death. And they sleep in Jesus Christ right now Amen. as far as their bodies are concerned. Amen. And so we all have loved ones or friends or acquaintances that knew the Lord that are in that circumstance. But when he talks about uh, verse uh, 51 there, uh, that he shall never see death, you know what he's talking about? He's talking about the second death. That's right. That's right. That's right. Because the second death is being cast into the lake of fire. And nobody that's ever been born again is ever going to get cast into the lake of fire. Right, man. Notice, if you will, Revelation chapter 20. Yeah. Revelation chapter 20. In Revelation chapter 20, the tribulation is over. Right. Jesus has come. Amen. He has come back with His bride. He came back with His bride because seven years prior He took His bride. Right. And now He's coming back with the bride that He took. And he's establishing his millennial kingdom on this earth. Hallelujah. And look what it says. Verse 20. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him how long? A thousand years. A thousand years. Six times in this chapter we're going to see a thousand years mentioned. It says, verse 3. And cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more, till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loosed a little season. Yeah. And I saw thrones, and they that sat upon them, 
and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. We call that the millennium. Amen. Now the word millennium is not in the Bible. Just like the word rapture is not in the Bible. Just like the word trinity is not in the Bible. Uh, just like the word Bible is not in the Bible. All right? And so just because a word isn't in the Bible doesn't mean that the doctrine isn't. And so the concept of a thousand year reign is clearly there because the Latin word millennium, mil, thousand, annum, annual, thousand years, millennium. And so that word millennium may not be there, but the thousand years clearly is. Yes, it is. Wow. Verse 5. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. Do you see that? Uh, listen here. If you're part of that first resurrection, uh, if you're part of, of that uh, 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 first resurrection that has three parts, uh, the rapture of the Old Testament saints, the rapture of the church age saints, right. and the rapture of the tribulation saints, uh, all three of them with that uh, come up hither, if you're part of that first resurrection, the second death has no power on you. Right. Amen. Amen. No power. no power. No power on you whatsoever. And so God is going to raise up those believers once That's again. Right. And listen here, for those of us that are part of the body of Christ, He's going to change our vile bodies and fashion it like unto His glorious body. Uh, we're never going to know sin again. We're never going to know death again. We're never, know, uh, never going to know sin, anything as far as sin, corruption, death, etc. Oh, God. And so listen here. But those that have not experienced that first yeah. resurrection, yeah. they're going to find out what the second death is all about. Yeah. And so look what it says here in verse uh, 7. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. And they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about and the beloved city and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. Now watch verse 11. And I saw a great white throne. You see that? A great white throne and him that sat on it from whose face the earth and heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. There'll be nowhere to run, nowhere to hide in that day, my friend. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were open, and another book was opened, which is the book of life, and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works, and the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works, and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. That's the end of the sinner. Uh, that's the end of everyone who's not part of that first resurrection. Uh, that's the end of anyone who rejects Jesus Christ and does not trust the blood atonement of Christ for the forgiveness of their sins. Uh, that's every person that wants to be judged by their baptism. Uh, that's every person that wants to be judged by their church membership or by keeping the Ten Commandments or by doing some other work in this flesh. Don't worry. You want to be judged by your works? Someday God will give you the opportunity. Yeah, that's right. That's But you may not like the outcome because these folks find themselves in a lake of fire and the Bible says it's the second death. Yeah. And right. so, listen here. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Yes, he that Amen. believeth in me shall never see death. Amen. Amen. Praise God, I believe. That's right. Woo! Look over at John chapter 11. 
John chapter 11, because I think I just misquoted it, and I want to give it to you John right. That's what happens when you start to get old. I'm getting old like Flasky now. <laughs> I just turned 50, and so my mind isn't quite what it used to be. So when I start misquoting verses, that's when it's time to turn to them. Amen? But look at John chapter 11. In John chapter 11, Jesus says this, verse 25. I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? Yeah. What's the answer? She saith unto him, Yea, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which has come into the world. Uh, I believe the same thing. Uh, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Christ that should come into this world. The sinless Son of God. And listen here. If I die as far as this flesh, uh, I'm not dead. I'm just sleeping, waiting for God to raise me yeah. back up again. But you know what? If you die lost without Christ, you are dead indeed. And God will raise you up temporarily at that great white throne. But it's only to judge you according to your works to put you in a lake of fire, that's the second death, and the smoke Amen. of your torment will ascend up forever and ever. Yep. But here in John chapter 8, Jesus said, Verily, verily, verse 51, I say unto you, if a man keep my saying, he shall never see death. Amen. Oh, you might sleep as far as this flesh is concerned, yeah, that's right. but you'll never experience that second death. And verse 52, then said the Jews unto him, Now we know that thou hast a devil. Abraham is dead. And the prophets, and thou sayest, If a man keep my saying, he shall never taste death. Art thou greater than our father Abraham, which is dead? And the prophets are dead. Who makest thou thyself? I mean, it's a, it's a legitimate question. I mean, Abraham was the greatest person as far as the Jews were concerned, because that was the father of Israel. Uh, that was the start of the family that became a nation, that became God's chosen people. Uh, he was dead. And so, uh, how could Jesus be saying the truth when someone like Abraham was dead? And not just Abraham, but also the prophets. How could the prophets be dead if what Jesus was saying was true? Who makest thou, uh, thou, uh, whom makest thou thyself? Jesus answered, If I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It is my Father that honoreth me, of whom ye say that he is your God. Amen. Yet ye have not known him, but I have known him. And if I should say I know him not, I shall be a liar like unto you. But I know him and keep his saying. Amen. <coughs> How many preacher fellowships do you think that Jesus would get invited to in 2019? Yeah. How many prayer breakfasts would invite him in to be the special speaker? Uh, I tell you what, you get over there, Matthew chapter 23, woe unto you scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, oh, you, yeah. uh, thou blind fool, and uh, 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 how shall ye escape the wrath to come, and ye serpents, ye generation of vipers, and all yeah. that stuff. Uh, how many preacher fellowships and prayer breakfasts would have Jesus in to preach to them? You know, uh, the Jesus of this world is not the Jesus of the Bible. You know that, right? right. right. Uh, the Jesus of TBN yeah. is not the Jesus of the Bible. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, the Jesus of, uh, uh, what's the Pat Robertson operation? Yeah. Uh, 700 Club. Yeah. Yeah. The Jesus of the 700 Club and all that yeah. is not the Jesus of the Bible. That's right. Uh, that's the Jesus. Jesus of the Mormons and the Jesus of the Catholics and, uh, and the Jesus of... Joel Olstein and Benny Hinn and all that crap. That's not the Jesus of the Bible. That's right. The Jesus of the Bible is the one that will tell you the truth. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the Jesus of these other groups are the ones that won't tell you the truth, but will try to make you feel good about yourself. Yeah, come on. You know what? Sometimes you don't need to be made to feel good about yourself. You, mean, uh, you, you need to be made to feel bad about yourself. <laughs> you need to figure out how God sees you yeah. and understand why he sent a Savior to die in your place right. and Amen. why you need to repent Amen. and put That's your right. faith and trust in Amen. him. Amen. That's Amen. right, Lord. Praise Amen. the Lord. I don't know like it is. Verse 55. Yet ye have not known him, but I know him. And if I should say I know him not, I shall be a liar like unto you, but I know him and keep his saying. Now watch verse 56. 
Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. Now this is where things start to take a very interesting turn. Your father Abraham, the one you're trusting in, the one that you've got all this confidence in, the one that you boast of as far as you are his children, your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day. Amen. Amen. Now, of course, this makes no sense to the Jews whatsoever. Jesus at this point is somewhere between 30 and 33 years old. Yeah. You know, it says, uh, verse 57, Then said the Jews unto him, Thou art not yet 50 years old, and hast thou seen Abraham? Abraham's been dead for over a thousand years. Probably close to 2,000 years. You're not even 50 years old, son. How in the world have you seen Abraham? How can you say that Abraham rejoiced to see your day? That he was glad and happy about that thing? How can that be possible? Yeah. Verse 58. Amen. Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Before Abraham was, I am. Boy, you talk about a loaded verse. Uh, uh, you talk about a shotgun blast to the head. Uh, uh, you talk about uh, dropping a nuclear bomb. Uh, you talk about uh, a grenade in the hole and all that stuff. Uh, let me tell you something. Uh, he just dropped the biggest bomb on them he could possibly drop. Uh, before Abraham was, I am. Now, you understand the significance of that, right? You understand the fact that I am, that was the title of God. Right. That's right. In Exodus chapter 3, when Moses is on the backside of the desert and he comes up to Mount Horeb and he sees that burning bush and the voice of God cries to him out of that bush and says, Moses, Moses. And Moses turns to see the, 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 the thing of this, um, this impressive thing of this burning bush. Uh, listen here. That was God that was speaking Amen. to him. Amen. That was Jehovah. Uh, that was the God of heaven. And when Moses said, Who shall I say that the, to the children of Israel, Who shall I say has sent me? Yeah. That voice from that bush said, Tell them I am. I am. Praise the Lord. I am that I am. And you got all these Mormons out there and all these Jehovah Witnesses that deny the deity of Christ. They deny the Trinity of the Godhead. Uh, they don't believe the Bible. They reject the Bible. Uh, let me say something to you. These unsaved Jews understood what he was saying. Yeah. 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 Sure did. Yeah. They understood what he was saying. Look at the next verse. Then they took up stones to cast at him. But Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them, and so passed by. Why were they seeking to stone him? Because he had committed blasphemy. He was claiming to be the God of Mount Sinai. Yeah. He was claiming to be the voice that spoke to Moses from the burning bush. Amen. The Mormons may not get that. These Jews did. The Jehovah's Witnesses may not get that. These Jews did. They understood exactly what he was, what he was saying. Before Abraham was, I am. Look at this. Uh, before Abraham was. Let's look at a couple passages. Take your Bible and come back to John chapter 1. Obviously, we've already covered this when we started this book. But look back at John chapter 1. John chapter 1, verse 1. John chapter 1, verse 1. Amen. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. You see that? Notice it's in the beginning. What's that remind you of? The book of Genesis. In Genesis 1 1, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, right? Uh, this one goes right back to where Genesis started. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The New World Translation that the Jehovah's Witnesses use, their translation says, the Word was a God. And it's a small g, not a capital G. And they'll try to take you to the Greek. Understand that when they take you to the Greek, the crowd that's trying to take you to the Greek, they can't even read Greek themselves. Yeah. I got a word of advice for you. Don't take advice on Greek from someone who doesn't know Greek. 
That's right. Right. Because I've never met a JW yet that knew Greek. No. And they want to tell you about the Greek in John chapter 1, verse 1. So in the beginning was the Word. In the beginning. The beginning of what? Of everything. Amen. That's right. Amen. All of it. Right. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness covered the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God uh, moved on the face of the waters. And then it says that God said, God said, God said. Amen. God said? Amen. Yes, God said the Word. Amen. That's the Word. That's right. Verse 1 said, in the beginning God created there's the Father. My. In verse 2, the Spirit moved on the face of the waters. There's the Holy Ghost. Amen. And in verse 3, God said, let there be light. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. That's the Word. In the beginning That's was right. the Word. Amen. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. Amen. Amen. You can't get three verses into your King James Bible without seeing the Trinity of God. Amen. That's right. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord, bro. In the beginning. Nuts out there. Yeah, no doubt. In the beginning. In the beginning. Before or after Abraham. Before. 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 Before Abraham was, I am. I am. Before Abraham was, I am. Right there at the beginning. Come to Micah. This is where we'll find out who's been reading their Bible or not. Do we look around and see you checking out your index to find Micah? <laughs> we know that you ain't been reading your Bible. Amen. Micah chapter 5. Micah chapter 5. Look at verse 2. Micah chapter 5, verse 2. And Micah 5, 2. But thou, Bethlehem, Epaphra, I never can say that, uh, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me that is, ru that is to be ruler in Israel whose going forth have been from old, even from everlasting. I wish I had a New World Translation with me here tonight. I don't, because I know they mess with this verse too. I don't know if anyone out there has a, a phone app that has the New World Translation. Yeah, yeah. And so uh, someone look up uh, uh, Micah 5.2 uh, in the New World Translation, because I know that they mess with this verse also. But uh, listen here. It says, whose goings forth have been from everlasting everlasting that means before God ever said let there be anything all the way back before that his goings forth are from everlasting you know why because he's the alpha and he's the omega that's right alpha that's the first letter in the Greek alphabet omega the last he's the A and he's the Z brother Byron go ahead uh, new world translation and you, O Bethlehem, Ephrathah, uh, Ephrathah uh, the one too little to be among the thousands of Judah, for you will come out for me, uh, the one to be ruler in Israel, whose origin is from ancient times, from the days of long ago. Whose origin is from ancient times. <laughs> what? That means he could have been a caveman drawing pictures on the wall. <laughs> Ancient times. Who, know, who even knows what that means? I know what everlasting means. Right. Yeah. Right. I know what everlasting means. It means he has no beginning and he has no end because he's God. Amen. He's Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God and the Word was God. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt well, among us, well, and we beheld His glory, Amen. the glory is of the Amen. only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth, yeah. before Abraham was. Amen. I am. Amen. 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 Jesus is the I am. Jesus is the I am. What does that mean for you? That means that there's no salvation or hope in anyone else. That's right. You know why? Because the one who is the I am said this. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father 
but by my name. Amen. And so listen here. Praise the Lord. You can pray to the Blessed Virgin till the beads fall off of your rosary. Exactly. That's right. right. Um, you can rub Buddha's fat belly and make a wish <laughs> till his belly is more polished than the finest brass. Amen. Uh, uh, you can uh, pray five times a day towards Mecca till you wear a hole in your prayer mat. Uh, listen here. Uh, you can live a kosher life till you fall into a graveyard. Kiss the toe of Peter. You can kiss the toe of Peter till it falls off. I think that happened over in Rome. I think, I think, yeah. so, I think some pilgrims kissed his toe so much his toes fell off. Yeah. He must have been diabetic too, brother. <laughs> <laughs> he must have got the gangrene. Amen. Amen. Hey, listen here. You can go through all that superstition and mumbo jumbo all you want to. The one who said before Abraham was, I am, Amen. that fella said, I am the way, the truth, That's and right. the life. Amen. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Thank you, Jesus. Let me ask you a question tonight as I close. I told you it was going to be short tonight. Amen. That's why I was so long-winded in the introduction. That's right. Y'all missed that long-winded uh, introduction because y'all came in late, but y'all can go back and watch the video. <laughs> That'll be better TV than whatever's being broadcast tonight. <laughs> Listen here. What are you going to do with Jesus Christ? That's right. You know, Pontius Pilate was faced with a choice. He could either release Jesus or he could release Barabbas, oh, yeah. who was a murderer. He asked the people. He, he was a real politician. Could have been Democrat or Republican, it don't matter. Six of one, half a dozen of the other. Right wing, left wing, it's all part of the same corrupt bird. That's right. That's right. Right wing or left wing, it's all part of the same corrupt bird. Pigs in a poke. Yep, pigs in a poke. That's right, sister. Yeah. But Pilate, he was a real politician. He wanted to take a vote. He wanted to let the people vote. Who shall I release unto you? The king of the Jews? Or this fellow Barabbas? They all said Barabbas. Yeah. All of them. They all said let Barabbas go. <clears throat> that fellow that had rebelled against Caesar, that fellow that had caused an insurrection, and had murdered a man in the insurrection, they said, let that fellow go. And then Pilate asked what I consider, and this is just my opinion, you may disagree, Pilate asked the most important question that's ever been asked in the history of the human race. He said, what shall I do then with Jesus, which is called Christ? Do you know what's important about that question? Is Pilate didn't say, what shall David Gibson do with Jesus, which is called Christ? Uh, he didn't say, what shall Byron do with Jesus, which is called Christ? He didn't say, what shall Kevin do with Jesus, which is called Christ? He didn't say, Jimmy, Linda, uh, Terrence. He didn't say anything other than, what shall I do with Jesus, which is called Christ? Well, let me turn that, equ that question around on you. Mm. And those of you that are watching out there in Internet land, let me turn it around on you. What are you going to do? Mm. What are you going to do with them? He said before Abraham was, I am. He said in so many words that he is the Almighty God. And because he is the Almighty God, someday you're going to stand before him and you're going to give account of yourself to him. And he's going to judge you. And if you receive him, he receives you. But if you reject him, he rejects you. What are you going to do with him? What are you going to do with Jesus, which is called Christ? Before Abraham was, 
I am. Amen. Don't make the mistake these Jews made. That's right. Because these Jews, as far as we know, most of them, if not all of them, most of them died lost without Christ. And the last thing they ever said to his face is you're a demon-possessed Samaritan. Wow. You looked God in the face and told him that he was a demon-possessed Samaritan. Is that how you want to spend your eternity? No. They picked up rocks to throw at him to stone him because they thought he'd blast him. When all he did was tell them the truth. You know what? Uh, Jesus said, marvel not if the world hates you. That's right. Know that it hated me before it hated you. In 21st century Christianity, we've allowed ourselves to be deceived into thinking that we should be popular because we're Christians. Yeah, yeah come on. Man. Yeah, come on now. We are not going to be popular no, sir. if we preach the truth. That's right. Now, if we open up the doors and let the Rainbow Coalition come in yeah. and support LGBT, QRST, UV, WXYZ, Eventually, they're going to run out of letters in the alphabet to add to this stuff. <laughs> That's right. They're eventually going to run out of letters. You know, it's Pride Month. But the Bible says that pride leads to destruction. That's right. That's right. The Bible says that God resists the proud, but gives grace, grace to the humble. So all them sodomites out there wanting to celebrate pride, God's resisting them. He's resisting them because they're proud. But yeah. he's also resisting them because what they're doing is an abomination. Amen, Amen brother. That's right. Amen. That's right. The men of Sodom were wicked exceedingly. Yeah. They're sinners before the Lord and wicked exceedingly. That's what's happening. That's right. Pride. Amen. You better ditch your pride. That's right. And you better put your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Exactly. But let me tell you this. If you're going to preach the truth in this world, you're not going to be popular. That's right. Brother Gibson, was you popular last night? No. Was people loving on you last night? Yeah. Was they hugging your neck and kissing your cheek and putting dollars in your pocket because they appreciated you preaching the truth so much? No. No. That's not what happened. Let me tell you something. That crowd and the same crowd that I was with y'all a couple weeks ago down at Virginia Beach, that crowd would rip your neck apart and spit down your throat if they could get away with it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Uh -huh. If yeah. they could get away with it. Yeah. Guess what? They can get Guess what? The restraint of God is about to be pulled back and they will get away with it. Yeah, I believe it. Yeah. Yeah, the That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. I believe in a pre-tribulation rapture. Absolutely. Amen. Amen. That's right. Amen. That's right. I believe. I believe as a Christian, I won't go through one second of the time of Jacob's trouble. Amen. But you know what? God never said that we wouldn't suffer tribulation. That's right. Before the tribulation shows up. Amen. Amen. Choose a side. Choose a side. Yeah. I'm choosing the one that said. Before Abraham was. Exactly. That's, right. that's, right. that, that, that's the one I'm choosing. I'm choosing the one that said before Abraham was, I am. Because I know when it's all over with, he wins, and I'm going to be on the winning side. Amen. Let's stand for prayer. Amen. Lord God, thank you for this day. Thank you for your blessings. Amen. Thank you for your goodness and mercy, thank Lord. You, Father. Father, thank you for the privilege of being That's able to right. come preach to the saints of True Vine Baptist Church tonight. Thank and Lord, you, we pray for this, bless this time. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And Father, Amen. thank you for the spirit of God that bears yeah. witness to the truth of these holy scriptures. And now, Lord, I pray that you deal with the hearts of every person that's come. Lord, every person that's watched the broadcast or will watch the broadcast at a later time, Lord, I pray the Spirit of God would speak yes. to their hearts, Lord. And Father, we pray that you bring conviction of sin, righteousness, and judgment to come. And we pray that sinners would have repentance towards God 
and faith towards the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And for those who are saved, Father, I pray that all of us would be challenged in our hearts to be Amen. salt and light yeah. every day of our lives Amen, in the world yes, that you've God. allowed us to live Help. in. Yeah. And Lord, I pray that we can influence people towards the Lord Jesus Christ. No man liveth to himself, no man dieth to himself, Amen. Lord. Every day we push people closer to the cross or we push them further away. Oh, Father, help us to be ambassadors yeah. of Christ Amen. that helps reconcile this world back to you. Amen. And Lord, we'll thank you for it. We love you, Lord. Yes. Father, thank you for loving us. Please watch over us and bless us now. We'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You're dismissed. May the Lord bless you. Hey, how are you?